hey guys, what's happening? So, in a previous video, I showed you this uh, Creality the Ender 3. And, uh, I mean, I dialed in pretty good the way it is. I upgraded the uh, main board to it, added a VL Touch to it. Uh, but one of the main issues with these Creality printers is that it only has a single Z. It only has a single Z lead screw. And it's almost like, it's actually, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but, um, you know, it was, since I upgraded the, the, the bed and I made it fix mount, it's a super flat right now, right? But, um, yeah, just, I mean, that, that's actually one of the issues. I'm, that's why I never bought one of these printers myself, is that I couldn't stand this design, this wheel design where you actually have a 1Z lead screw and it's just supporting the entire side. So you have this whole room for slop. Even though I, I tighten this up, like it was an insane amount of slop before I fixed it. But still, I mean, you know, as this thing goes down, the weight of this extruder well, it's actually going to add weight to it, so it's not going to make it even. So once you do your bed leveling, as you're printing, this thing might, you know, move around a lot, messing up your prints. So they do actually sell an upgrade kit for this thing, like a dual Z upgrade. But this kit is not the dual motor kit. So this is actually the one with the belt driven, so it always keeps in sync. I actually like this one better. For a small print like this, it makes way more sense to actually have a belt, keeping these things always aligned. Because when you have a dual motor set up here, like this, right, it's a lot harder to keep these things aligned and even. Um, actually, I might even convert this over to a belt. Um, just because if you have like one weaker motor, you know, than the other, or like the voltage is not right, one motor is going to be moving faster than the other. So it will automatically get itself out of sync. So, I think this kit was like 40 bucks. The customer bought it, so I'm going to install it. Looks like it came with, uh, okay, two lead screws. Okay, and this should be for the Ender 3. Um, I guess I need to figure out where I'm going to put this power supply. I'm assuming I'm probably just going to move it back. But, uh, alright, so I'm going to have to go through it and uh, figure it out here. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be, uh, you know, I'll go through the steps. What I have to go through, but there's no manual, obviously, so. I guess I'm just going to have to eyeball it. Alright, so one of the issues with the Ender 3 is they actually have this power supply right where this uh, z-axis is going to go so I gotta take this power supply off and either relocate it down to here at the bottom or um, move it back a couple you know millimeters whatever but uh, I'll figure that out I mean in case I, I might have to design some brackets or do something with it but um, yeah there might be something on Thingiverse but if not then I'll design my own back brackets but I like to put the power supply down here so, but yeah, it just removes with a couple screws here. All right, so it's threw me off at first, but they actually have a duplicate screw pack. One Allen or Hex, and the other one Phillips. So yeah, it was weird because I was like, well, why do they have so many screws? But uh, yeah, they just give you one of each, so I'm going to end up using the Phillips. Um, all right, so basically you have these uh, things right here that go like this. They hold the lead screws, and then there's a couple like lock screws you put down on each one. Keeps the bearing in place, and you have this other tensioner. I'll show you that. Which uses a couple of uh, T-nuts right here like that. But, uh, alright, so I'm going to get these mounted, and go from there. In the pack, you're going to have three long screws and three shorter screws. The four shorter screws go to the top here, and then the three longer screws go to the wheels here. Alright, so the kit came with... Uh, two Z-Rods, so they're actually longer than the stock one, that's why they give you two. And it's supposed to come up and hang out, hang out over this, and that's actually what the pulley's holding. So you're going to have to replace the existing one, so it's M3 Allen to get the uh, thing off here. Alright, so I think you guys are starting to get the idea here. So that little black washer goes there, time belt goes on there. So the set screw is a little bit done, but it goes right there. Alright, so the next piece is they add the wheel here. Or the uh, the rear plate here, so you're gonna have the uh, the brass uh, lead screw nut will go right here, and then you'll have three of these little metal washers, and they're gonna go between the wheel and there, and I'll show you that. All right, so I just realized that the eccentric nut is actually behind there, so you're gonna need some M3 hex. I'm gonna have to pull this off to get the longer screw in there, just separate from this, so I can make a new screw in there. 
Hey, got the new racket on, and the new Z rod just flips down and goes down like that. And just screw it in like that. But you want to make sure it doesn't go down too far because it's the pulley on this on the air side, the new side, actually holds it up and into position. So get that black washer on there and the other pulley. Alright, so the tensioner is just basically two bearings back to back. Um, and the white spacer, and then that thing, and then two T nuts like that, and then just go like that. All right, nice All right, so now you need something long and flat um, because you want to make sure this thing is perfectly flat with the bed. So I've already measured this. I know it's flat. It's actually like a stud finder, um, but it's totally flat with the bed, no gaps. And that's actually this is how I'm going to adjust my belt. Yeah, because if it's not flat with the bend, then it's going to be doing this. So before you put the belt on it and tighten it, you want to make sure it's totally flat. So there's one thing I don't like about this kit. Um, I mean, that dual ball bearing design, it should be on the opposite side of the belt, on the flat side of the belt. But they want this to rub on the front side of the belt, which could wear these teeth out. You're putting unnecessary stress in these teeth. So I actually do have a box of idlers that... This is actually what it should be on there, is an idler pulley, and not just a couple of ball bearings. Here's a closer look if you don't know what I'm talking about. So actually having the belt, the teeth riding on this flat uh, flat surface right here, under tension, is actually going to prematurely wear out the, the belt. So you're much better off getting one of these, uh, I'll put a link down below where you can get this stuff, but you're much better off getting actually a, a real idler, belt driven idler. I got the idler on there. Let's see, uh, I'm going to check repeatability, see how flat it is. Alright, All right. so I'm going to do a quick test print and come back. Flip this around, power back on. I still got to figure out the power supply, but I'll be in another video. Another thing too is the, uh, I have to do something with this thing. It actually interferes with this thing. So maybe if I raise it or something. All right, so I'm doing my first print with this thing. I'm actually printing out the, uh, the, the parts to move the uh, power supply down to the bottom. Uh, take a look. See, there's hardly any movement. That's what you want. So when there's hardly any movement at all, that means this thing is really, really flat. So what, what will happen is if this bed is not flat or if this thing is not flat, it will go up and down to compensate for an uneven surface. But the fact that I'm seeing like no movement, hardly at all, means that this thing is very flat. So that's a really good thing. I can also tell by how this, when I'm doing out the uh, skirt layers, how uneven they are. So I, I make a small adjustment, 0.1, from 3.6 to 3.7. But, all right, so this is gonna be a 22 hour print. This will be a good test for this printer. And uh, pretty cool thing, you know? Like I said, these, these printers are pretty cool. I mean, they're pretty cheap. I mean, just things like that, like the Z axis. Um, you know, I hate this this wheel design. I like linear rails. Um, but sorry, besides that, it prints awesome. I mean, look at these prints, though. I mean, that's pretty insane. I mean, like hardly no like no ghosting virtually. Um, look at that that's on the Y axis too. So, all right, guys. So uh, if you want this kit, put a link down below. And uh, if you're in Orange County, California, and on your 3D printer repaired or upgrade, uh, numbers down below. All right.